What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Dustin and last time what we did is we actually over the last two videos we gave our player some animations. We gave him an idle animation and we gave him a walk animation as well. Um, we also made it so that when we're walking in a certain direction and then stop our player is still facing that direction in our idle animation. So what I want to do this time is now that we have the ability to kind of walk around, I want to give our player a, a, a world to walk around in. So we're going to be using Unity's uh, built-in tile map system. Uh, you could also use, uh, use a tiled to create your maps. Um, tiled is a really powerful tool to use, and it's got a lot of awesome features. So if you want to use that, uh, feel free to use that. Uh, if you don't know how to use Tiled, I might make a video on uh, on using it. But in this one, I'm just going to use uh, Unity's built-in tile mapping system. So what I want to do first is if you go online and go to opengameart.org, they have this really cool um, tile map here for us to for us to use. Um, and it's, it's under the public domain license, so we can use this for commercial or personal use and don't have to worry about buying anything, crediting anything. Um, but if you want to credit the creator, it's this ARMM1998. Um, so yeah, if you just click this, uh, gfx.zip, it'll download the file that we need. Um, so... If we go ahead and go to that file and open it up, then it'll give us a few different sprite sheets that we can use. I want to focus on this overworld sprite sheet because this will create our our overworld. Um, it also has a character in here. It has two characters in here. Um, and it looks like a character that you can customize with your own art as well. Um, and so I'm just going to take this overworld. Um, Sprite sheet. I'm just going to drag it into our art folder right here. And then once I have this in here, I want to make sure that our texture type is set to Sprite 2D and UI. I want to set our Sprite mode to multiple. Pixels per unit is going to be 16. And under filter mode, we're going to change it to point no filter. And then the max size is going to be 1024. So if we go ahead and hit apply here, um, we can now go into our sprite editor. And we can chop this up into a bunch of different sprites that we can use for our tile map. Um, so we can go ahead and hit slice. Uh, we're not going to use automatic. We're going to use grid by cell size. And the size is going to be 16 by 16. So we can go ahead and hit slice there, and then hit apply. So this might take a minute to um, apply all of this to it. This is breaking up it, breaking it up into a lot of different individual images. I think it's just over a thousand different images. So I will be back as soon as that is done. All right. So now that that is done, um, you see we have this drop down arrow here. And it gives us all of these different sprites to use. Um, we're not going to use these directly from uh, this like this. What I'm going to do is if we just close out of our sprite editor. Um, we can go up to window. Go down to 2D. And select tile palette. So that will bring up this, uh, this window over here. And I just want to dock this right down below my hierarchy here and drag that up just a little bit and let's we can create a new palette here and i'm going to name this overworld like that um we can leave grid and cell size uh the same we don't have to change anything there and just click create so now I want to make sure this goes into our asset folder. I'm going to put this in our art folder. And then 
So I'm just going to create a new folder inside of the asset folder here. I'm going to call this tile maps. Just like that. And then click select folder. And now we have this overworld palette that we can use. So now what I want to do is I want to, I'm going to collapse that. I'm going to drag this whole uh, sprite here into our tile palette. I'm going to make sure that we do this in our tile maps folder. And then this will generate the tile out assets for that entire sprite sheet. Now, it's doing this for every individual tile, so this is going to take a while. So, once again, I'll be right back. Alright, so now that that's done, um, we have down here that entire sprite sheet uh, for us to use. Um, we can click individual tiles here um, to select what image we want to use. Um, but what I want to do is up in the hierarchy, if we right click, select 2D object, and then select tile map, it'll create this grid object for us to um, draw our world in. So first thing I want to do is I want to drop this down and it already has one element here for us, uh, one tile map here. I'm going to rename this to ground. And then I'm also going to create a couple of more of these within this grid. So I'm just going to highlight our ground. I'm going to duplicate it a couple of times. And I want to think about what other elements might be in our world. So another thing we're going to have is we're going to have some pathways. Um, we are going to have some solid objects and that's all I'm going to have in here for now. Um, so yeah, we're, we have our ground, we have our pathways, which will basically be on the ground, but we want to, I want to create a different layer for it and I will show you why um, when we get there. And then um, another layer for our solid objects. So now what I want to do is I want to go into our ground and we have here a sorting layer that we can set these on. Um, I want to create a new sorting layer, so add sorting layer. And then I'm going to hit this plus button here and we're going to call this layer background. And then I want to drag this layer just above our player so that it renders underneath our player. And then if we just go back to the ground, actually we can highlight all three of these if we want, and we can set the sorting layer for all three of them to the background. So now I what I want to do is I want to change the order in the layer as well. I can leave the order in the layer for the ground at zero. Um, I'm going to set pathway to one so it's above the ground, and then I'm going to set solid objects to two. So now what I want to do is I want to come down here to the active tile map, make sure that the ground is selected, and I'm just going to give the ground some grass so I can just select this uh, grass tile here. And we can do this one of a couple of different ways. One, we can use this paintbrush tool, and then we can just draw on our ground however we want it. Or we can use um, this filled box tool, which will allow us to just click and drag and fill in an area. Another way we can do this um, is if we just click this paintbrush, or not paintbrush, paint bucket we can fill in an entire area with whatever we want. So what I want to do is I want to use this grass here. I'm just going to create a grassy area that we're in like that. And then I want to also, I'm going to create a pathway. And I'll show you why we created a 
another layer for the pathway. Um, so if I go ahead and keep it on our ground layer, let's see, where can I find a pathway? Let's use this one right here. Uh, I want to use this one. So let's select our main path. And if we go in here, we can just create a simple pathway here. And then it has these edges to it as well, so that it's not just a solid line up at the top here. So if we go ahead and select that top section, um, we can click and drag this edge here like that. But what you'll notice is it completely replaced that grass altogether. And since there's nothing here behind this, uh, this edge here, it's just showing behind our, um, behind our map. So the reason why it's showing the background behind is because it's just completely replacing the grass tiles that we already uh, put here. So that's why we went ahead and put it on a different layer so that it draws this on top of the grass instead. So I'm going to go ahead and redraw in our pathways up here, or our redraw in our grass over the pathways. And then I'm going to change the active tile map to pathway. So now when we draw this on here, like that, we can draw in our edges and you can still see the grass behind it. It just looks a whole lot better. So you can go all the way around. It's got these corner pieces as well. And then all of our sides, the bottom, and then these corner pieces here, and the left side, just like that. So now we have this, uh, this little pathway and grassy area for us to wander around in. Um, so yeah, so now if we go ahead and hit play, it looks like we're actually in an area. So that's great. Um, so now on our solid objects layer, what I want to do is I just want to create a house really quick. So what I can do is instead of just selecting each individual tile and drawing it onto our map, I can just select, click and drag and select all of these tiles like that. And then we can just drop this in right there. Now we have this little pathway here. We have uh, grass. We have a house for us to go up to. And now if we hit play, we can go over to this house up here, just like that. So, but now, the issue that we have is down in our game view, we can't see our player anymore. I mean, we can see in our scene view that we're over at this house, um, but we can't see our player here in the game view. And then we also can just kind of walk on top of this house. So what I want to do is I want to make it so, one, we can see our player in our game, and two, we can interact with this house. So, um, I might do that and do both of those things in the same video, or I might split, I don't know, I, I might split them up into two, depending on how long the first one is, but the first thing I want to focus on is making it so that we can continue to see our player when he walks outside of our screen, um, and I'm going to do that in the next video. So, if you're enjoying the series, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, feel free to comment down below. Um, let me know what you want to see in this video or in this series, and I will see you next time.